I'm Doug Fullington. I'm the Education Programs Manager here at Pacific Northwest Ballet, and today we're discussing our upcoming production of Kent Stoll's Cinderella. I think there are at least two reasons why Cinderella is such a popular ballet. The first being the story. It's a universal story that I think everyone can relate to. And second, the wonderful score composed by Sergei Prokofiev. The story of Cinderella has been with us for centuries, but it wasn't set as a ballet until 1815. Since then, there have been many productions of the ballet. And I think really none of the 19th century productions of Cinderella have stayed with us, likely because of the score. And it wasn't until Prokofiev composed his wonderful score in the 40s that Cinderella really became part of the canon of full-length classical ballets. We know that Petipa created a Cinderella. The Russian title is Zolushka, and it means cinders, just like the name Cinderella is referring to the burnt cinders. Uh, again, not a distinguished composer. Very likely beautiful choreography. You could always count on Petipa for wonderful choreography, but it is the score that helps a ballet maintain its interest and importance over time. Now, Prokofiev got his early experience composing for ballet with Diaghilev in his famous ballet Russe in Paris in the early 20th century. Diaghilev commissioned many scores from Prokofiev, and I think probably the most famous is Prodigal Son, which has masterful choreography by George Balanchine, and that was created in 1929. And in fact, it was the last ballet made for the ballet Russe before Diaghilev's death. And shortly after that, Prokofiev went back to live in Russia. He decided to live under uh, Soviet rule, and he continued to compose. Now, there were some constraints put on him because of Soviet aesthetics, but he was able to kind of wind his way through those and come up still with wonderful masterpieces. Of his two best-known ballets, Romeo and Juliet came first. It was composed in the late 30s and early 40s. And the ballerina it was closely associated with was Galina Ulanova, leading ballerina at the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow. And it was for Ulanova that Prokofiev had his Cinderella in mind when he began to compose it in 1940. Now, because of World War II, the composition process was slow. He was continually interrupted. He didn't finish until 1944. When the ballet finally premiered, it didn't premiere in Leningrad, but in fact at the Bolshoi Ballet in Moscow, and then the year after, in 1946, at the Kirov. And Prokofiev had some difficulty working with both of those companies. He had some complaints about reorchestrations that they forced on him, some changes in the story, but the ballet was very well received by the public, both in Moscow and in Leningrad. And then it finally came west in 1948 with Frederick Ashton's production for the Royal Ballet in London. And this is the production that was best known in the West, and it had some real peculiarities about it. Ashton set the roles of the stepsisters for men, following in the English pantomime tradition so popular across England, especially at Christmas time. And in fact, Cinderella continues to be the Christmas time ballet in England. So this is Cinderella as we've come to know it in the West. A lot of focus on the stepsisters and their antics, and it was a lot of fun. But when Kent decided to create his own Cinderella here at Pacific Northwest Ballet, he wanted a more singular focus on the role of Cinderella herself. So we still have the stepsisters. They're a lot of fun. They're still crazy. But they're played by women, and I think there is more of a relationship between them and Cinderella. Kent has also added some wonderful scenes in which Cinderella remembers her childhood. She remembers her mother and her father as he was before he married the uh, wicked stepmother. And we're very focused then on Cinderella and her journey from her unhappy experiences living with her stepmother and her stepsisters to finally finding her prince. Kent has choreographed a wonderful role for the ballerina. She has lots and lots of dancing. We see her dancing with an imaginary prince at the beginning of the ballet. We see her dancing at the ball. We see her dancing at the end of the ballet when they're finally reunited and their true identities are known. He also has created wonderful roles for the rest of the company. As with uh, many of our ballets, we include roles for children. We have 32 children in each performance of Cinderella. We have supernumerary roles. We have character roles that encourage the dancers acting abilities and of course all the wonderful dancing roles as well. 
Now, in working with Prokofiev's score, Kent, like many other choreographers before him, decided that he wanted to use some additional pieces from other Prokofiev works to supplement the score. So we have some excerpts from Prokofiev operas, we have excerpts from Prokofiev symphonies, and in this way Kent has enriched the score, again, to really help us focus on the story of Cinderella herself. Cinderella was created for us in 1994 and it was a very important season for Pacific Northwest Ballet. In January of 1993 the company moved from its studios in Wallingford at the Good Shepherd Center to the Phelps Center right here at Seattle Center. It was and continues to be a state-of-the-art building, one of the best facilities for ballet in the country. But it was important to Kent and also to Francia to let our audience know that it was still ballet and what we put on the stage that was most most important. So that year, Kent opened the season with his new Carmina Burana, and he closed the season with this new full-length, very opulent production of Cinderella. Again, as a reminder to all of us that it's what we put on stage and the dancers that are being developed and trained to be such great artists that is the priority for us at PNB.